In the modern day, the idea of race and social implications surrounding such ideas are being brought to the forefront of public discourse, often because of tragedy and oppression. To understand exactly what race is, it is necessary to go back and trace where race comes from. Now, it is possible to go extremely far back, notably to the ancient Greeks, to trace what race has developed into. But for the purposes of this project, we're going to be examining how modern ideas of race, notably tied to skin color and physical attributes, came to be the dominant understanding of the term race. Firstly, before we turn to how race has been conceptualized through the past, it's important to do a little housekeeping. Yes, you should have said no, you should have gone. Not quite like that. So to borrow from Yolva Noah Harari, humans are able to rule the world because they cooperate flexibly in large numbers because we are able to create and believe fictions. Race is one of such fictions. Now, just as with literary works of fiction, these stories are humans design are often able to encompass and consume us. And even decades after the fandom is no longer cool and most people decide that the movie really ruined the plot for them, there will still be people going down with a sinking ship, claiming that it's the best work of fiction they've ever heard. This huge oversimplification is why social injustices persist and why it is necessary to understand where the variety of fictions we surround ourselves with comes from. So once we establish that race is a social fiction, it is also important to establish that as most social fictions go, race was created and has evolved with a purpose. And finding that purpose through history is what we're going to try to do once we figure out where race came from. Now, without further ado, we may now proceed to the main portion of our show. What the heck is race? Like most historical questions, there's like maybe a right answer. As I said before, technically we can trace the idea of race back to the Greeks, perhaps even further. But when talking about the modern conceptions of race, it is possible to link these ideas to, you guessed it, a variety of European men. What? No. Men? Europeans? Creating social structures? It is almost impossible to attribute a building of an entire social system and hierarchy to one or even a handful of individuals. So what's important to understand is that in the Enlightenment, no, seriously, we'll get there. Just give me a minute. The almost obsessive need felt by thinkers to classify the entirety of the world extended to human beings. This is where the real development of what we consider to be race, and by extension, racism, white supremacy, and the ideas of a nation come into wide discourse. With that said, there are fairly clear articulations of theories around race that predate the Enlightenment. Therefore, we're going to take a second to examine those thoughts and the people behind them now. The person who is seen by some as responsible for the first articulation of racist views, that is, a position that divides people based on their skin color and physical attributes, while associating that group with one or more inherently negative characteristics, was Gomez de Zara from Portugal in the 1440s and 1450s. Now, Gomez is mentioned as the first by some, and like most things in history, depending on how you tilt your head, you'll see something different. But there is a discussion to be had on Gomez's work. So I would love to tell you that Gomez's ideas on race were crystal clear, but the waters are very, very murky. As I said before, we could pick a variety of starting points uh, for race, but for the sake of time, sanity, and frankly, the overall point, uh, we're starting in the 1440s and 1450s and doing some magical time leaps. Obviously, historical context is key. It's kind of the whole thing we got going on. So even from the starting point, you're gonna to need to know a very basic version of about 600 years of history. Basically, and I mean basically, the Islamic world was primarily controlled by the Ottomans, while the Christian world was controlled by a variety of Tubi European empires. The Ottomans started to set their gaze upon the Christian world and wound up attacking and gaining ground in the Iberian Peninsula. That's Spain and Portugal for all of y'all who aren't great at geography, which were obviously Christian. So Spain and Portugal weren't really loving this and they started fighting with the Ottomans in battles that are also called the Crusades. Um, and as the Ottomans were followers of the Islamic faith, they were called Moors at the time. It is important to understand that the Christian world found followers of the Islamic faith uncivilized, 
Why does this matter? Well, let me tell you, there are a few things European powers love more than civilizing missions. They weren't super into that with people of the Islamic faith, but it becomes important when the new world shows up. So fast forward a little bit, and Spain and Portugal are on the, getting on the up and up of voyaging, which leads them around Africa. The Portuguese began conquering different parts of Africa, which means conquering different people because, you know, they were there. And this is where the official chronicler of Portugal and keeper of the Royal Archives, Gomez de Zara, comes in. So now that we're caught up on the too long didn't read portion, we can focus on what Gomez said and why it's different than all the other starting points for tracing the concept of race. So before and still during Zazara's life, the idea of culture and rank within society was the most important contributing factor to race. The Greeks, for example, saw themselves as superior on the basis that they were Greek and they thought they were more advanced than other societies. You know, a few hundred years later, the Europeans already also had a bit of a superiority complex because they simply thought their culture was better than other people's. Even within Europe, these divisions existed. But Cesare diverts from this in his The Chronicle of the Discovery and Conquest of Guinea. In this writing, he obviously details the discovery and conquest of, of Guinea. <laughs> but while doing so, he also describes some of the people he sees along the way. When documenting a slave auction, he describes Black Ethiopians as, quote, so ugly, both in features and in body. Now, he doesn't explicitly write that he notes this because the slaves he's referring to would later be considered Black, but he does use a different tone and vocabulary to describe lighter-skinned slaves. Additionally, it's important to note that well new articulations of how to interpret and categorize people are expressed in Gomez's account. He often links ideas about physical features to ideas about how civilized a people are, which was typical of the era as discussed earlier. The ideas both around physical descriptors and cultural integrity would accompany the Portuguese and basically all other European powers to the Americas. Moving on, the next guy who was floating ideas of race around before the Enlightenment was François Bernier, who was a traveler and physician from France, who authored La Nouvelle Division de la Terre par de les différentes espèces ou races d'hommes qui l'ambit, or The New Division of the World According to the Different Types and or Races of Men Who Inhabit It. It is important to note that Bernier wrote 200 years after Gomez de Zara, and these two men were not the only ones to comment on race before the Enlightenment. No, seriously, I swear, we'll get there. Bernier also authored more writings that will comment on the categorization of human beings, but for our purposes, we're going to focus on a new division. In this writing, people are classified into four or five different groups. His words, not mine with the people being considered white being broader than one may expect. This group included all of Europe, some of Africa, and the inhabitants of India. He goes on to place all of Africa, I guess besides the part he included in the first group, into another group characterized by their quote, thick lips and stub noses, blackness, oily skin, and whiter than ivory teeth showing that some groupings in his writing are based on physical attributes. But referring back to the previous grouping, the one that included Europe and more, the places he is indicating outside of Europe have a history of civilization, with the best example being Egypt. But so didn't a lot of other places. China was super advanced for a long time, longer than Europe itself. And Europe went into Chinese markets so bad, they happened upon the new world. So while Bernier doesn't deviate completely from the cultural ideas that defined race in the past, he doesn't completely stick to it either. This is part of the reason why it's so hard for historians and other academics to pinpoint the exact starting point from the modern idea of race. But when reading articles and essays from the Enlightenment, it is undeniable that the idea of race became a dominant preoccupation across many societies. So that's what we'll turn our attentions to next. 
I told you we'd get to it. The Enlightenment. Happening in the 1700s and mainly occurring in Europe, the short of the story is that people were doing a lot of thinking and then writing about that thinking. And some people thought they should rule themselves, which led to subsequent thinking and more writing about that thinking. <laughs> now, we cannot get into each or frankly singular individuals um, writing in this period because time exists. <laughs> the time, the time. <laughs> What one needs to understand is this. As stated previously, the Enlightenment was obsessed with categorizing stuff. In this time and a little before with, you guessed it, Francois Bernier, anthropology became a cool and hip thing. People started to turn to science to understand the world. The Enlightenment's favorite pastime being needing to understand the world made sense. You may know that about 200 years prior, the old world happened upon the new and found people. You know, because they were there. Additionally, social inequality was becoming a bigger problem, and the spirit of what society was and who composed it started to need to be addressed. Insert the Enlightenment. It is this need to understand and define who was on the ins and outs of society that brought race to the forefront of discourse. Freedom was another big idea, and the question freedom for who needed an answer, and that answer of course being not them. By deeming some people people and others not, race enabled actions taken by European powers. Colonialism and imperialism and slavery existed for much longer than just this point, but were going to reach new heights around the world. While freedom for some would be granted at the expense of freedom for others in the American and French experiments with democracy nearing the end of the 1700s. This is where we look for purpose, not for mankind as done in the Enlightenment, but as to why the idea of race was created and continuous. As I've said all throughout this video, there is no single answer. Depending on who you ask, where they're from, and what their specialty is, they're going to say something different. What I can tell you as a first year undergrad student with about a month's worth of research is that the discourse surrounding race's purpose is highly concentrated around slavery and colonialism. Looking back, Gomez's writing was in the context of Portugal just before the Spanish happened upon the Americas and was literally documenting the conquest of foreign land. Later in Brazil, Portugal would go on to have some of the most brutal and deadly plantations in the Americas while instituting chattel slavery for the longest of any European power. It's easy to come to this conclusion about slavery and colonialism, especially in today's context, but perhaps the best and worst part about history, and maybe even the most beautiful, is that the puzzle remains incomplete. Even if it is, and probably always will be, impossible to get the who, where, when, and why of the five W's for the concept of race, it is critical to understand that post-enlightenment, the ideas surrounding race and who was on the ins and outs of a society, a nation, have pushed and led people to do some of the most monstrous and brutal things in human history. Even today, as we see horrors unfolding in the world around us, they are often based in blood and soil and us versus them arguments. This is why it remains critical to continually explore where human fictions are founded and to really ask ourselves and evaluate if they remain useful in the modern world.